live from the nation's summer capital. Broadcasting from Cape May to Denton and from Milford to Ocean City or worldwide online. You're listening to Open Source Radio with Don Carpenter on 92.7 WGMD. That's right, 92.7 WGMD. Want to thank Dan for uh, broadcasting out there at Nicola for their 40th anniversary. We'll go back to him in just a little bit. Uh, got a ton of stuff I want to get to today, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're staying out of the rain while it's raining right now. But uh, I'll try to keep you entertained for the next three hours. And uh, filling in for a friend, uh, he filled in for Dan this morning. Uh, I think next week we're going to do the same thing, and then we'll go back to normal for a little bit. Uh, yeah, so uh, I want to start off, I mean, I'm trying to make it a, uh, a wiener-free show today, so uh, we we'll, won't, won't have any talk about, uh, about Representative Wiener, even though it's tempting with the local connection, but I'm going to try to stay away from that this week. I might get myself in trouble. Uh, I want to start out with uh, something that's not really, it's not really newsworthy, but it's something I was thinking about during the week. I was actually up in uh, Newark out at the uh, Christiana Mall, and I was having lunch with someone, and we noticed uh, that the uh, Apple Store employees, they're, they're really strange. They kind of keep to themselves. It's, it's a really, it's a strange place to work, and it actually reminded me of a couple years ago when uh, I actually, after I got out of the truck driving business and went back to school, you know, to do the radio thing, uh, before I moved down here to work at the station, I, uh, you know, I needed a part-time job, so I went and applied for a job at the Apple store. And I like Apple computers and Apple products. I've always been a fan of you know, the iPod, and uh, I had a MacBook at one time until it died. And, uh, yeah, so I, I did a little bit of research on them, and it was a, re- and, you know, I mean, I knew that they had a strange interview process, but it kind of got me thinking what kind of, uh, what kind of, strange interviews maybe other companies are doing uh, i'll tell you a little bit about my story and then you know we'll take some calls at uh 945-9292 pound 927 that's a uh, total uh free call courtesy of verizon wireless and atlantic cellular your authorized verizon wireless dealer so yeah back to my uh back to my original story uh you know i applied for the job on apple's website i got an email back or a call, I can't recall which was. I got an email back from you know the, the manager of the store inviting me in for what they called a group interview. And I show up, uh, it was on a, a Sunday morning before the mall opened. It was, I think, 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the morning, maybe 8 o'clock. Before the mall opened, and there were 50 other people there, at least 50, maybe more. And they broke us up into groups. And, you know, we all, everybody sat at a table, with maybe four or five other people, and they uh, had us fill out a couple little questionnaires, you know, asking you know what you know about the products and you know what your experiences are. If you had a resume, you would bring that in. And what happened after that was just the strangest thing I've ever heard. At least for a job interview, they they gave us a blank sheet of paper and had us draw three things. We couldn't write anything. No words, no numbers, just draw three objects, which I, mean, I was already disadvantaged because I can't really, I can't even draw a straight line, much less anything else. But uh, yeah, three objects that represented our personality. And then we gave it to, you know, one of the employees that was working with each group. And then we had to trade papers with another person that was interviewing for the, you know, they probably only had one job open. So we had to trade papers with somebody that was competing with us for the job and then go on and explain what we thought that person meant by those pictures which yeah i mean i completely bombed that i think the uh the guy that gave me a paper i think he drew a picture of a football and you know a guy wearing headphones or something or music or something like that and then after after we did this activity i guess you could call it we had to come up with a five minute skit could be about anything as long as it had to do with you know, the products they were selling. We had to come up with a uh, five-minute skit and actually act out this skit for everybody else. 
Now, I understand that because they're looking for people that are creative and work outside the box. And, and I mean, that's, that's kind of, you know, kind of what radio people are looking for, too. So, I mean, I, I kind of looked at it as a, as a learning experience. But if, if you, if, I mean, if anybody that's been to the Apple store, they know, you know they run things a little bit differently than your average store, but they still, they still don't pay that much better than a regular store. And it was something that just struck me really strange to go through all of this trouble and then, of course, after this, after this, uh, you know, after this skit, everyone acted out. We, you know, broke up, went home, and then we're, you know, everyone was called back in. I assume everyone was called back in for a uh, second interview, that was a more traditional interview where you actually met with the manager and talked about your aspirations and what you know about the products and experience and stuff like that. And I think I, I mean, I, I think I did better at that than I did at the acting. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a trained actor. But of course, then I didn't get the job, and I'm here now, which uh, you know, I mean, things seem to work out for the best, at least in my uh, in my estimation. So yeah, my my question, my question for everyone out there, it, it this uh, this whole story actually got me thinking. Since uh, you know, and I think I think you know, since unemployment's so high these days, and Steve a couple weeks ago he had his uh, online or uh, his uh, on-air resume segment and I thought that was a really good idea. Of course I wouldn't steal that idea, but I think maybe it would be a good idea to share what what you think is good traits for potential employees. And you know, while we're at it, you know, I'd like to know if anyone else has any strange interview story. I mean maybe you know, maybe it's not exactly the same kind of you know, the same kind of uh, situation that I had, because I think Apple is probably pretty unique, but maybe you had a strange story of something, you know, some kind of mishap that happened during an interview. And uh, if you want to share any interview stories, 945-9292, 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware, pound 927, that's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. And, um, uh, so, I mean, yeah, have you ever had any kind of strange interviews? And, uh, you know, for anyone out there that actually owns a business, what do you look for in someone that you're interviewing? I mean, you know, does appearance matter? I mean, if it's, uh, I mean, I, I can say from my experience as a truck driver, I went, you know, I, I had a few truck driving jobs, and the interviews were never really as important as the road tests. And, you know, they got your driving record and all that stuff, so... The, the interviews were never really formal. And, of course, you don't dress up for an interview as a truck driver. I mean, if you show up in a suit and tie, it would be, you know, be kind of inappropriate, I think. So, you know, for, for those people out there that do own a business, what do you look for? And, um, you know, maybe someone out there that's recently gotten a job, what was your interview process like? I mean, since things are so competitive now for so few jobs out there, is it tougher to interview for a job now, you know, since there's, well, I mean, there's a lot of competition for any spot. Maybe the interview process has gotten a little tougher, and uh, you know, so if you did, if you did recently get a job, do you have any tips on, you know, for anybody out there that might be looking for a job right now? And uh, finally, you know, I think this is an obvious question, but uh, you know, do, does the kind of job that you're looking for dictate what kind of interview it is? Like I said, Apple is a little bit of an out-of-the-box company, so they have a strange interview process. It would be completely different than going to interview for a job at a, you know, at a, a, a uh, an automaking plant. Um, we're going to take a break. We're going to go right back out to Dan Gaffney in just a bit. We'll check the uh, weather and uh, pay a few bills, and we'll be right back. We'll take some more of your calls on this uh, this interview topic right after this. Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. Okay, we're gonna go back to the uh, go back to the interview story. Uh, 
I just, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm wondering, you know, I'm wondering out there if anybody does have any, uh, you know, have any interesting stories about interviews. Maybe, you know, like I said, you've recently gotten a job or maybe you interviewed for a job that you didn't get and you thought you did well. I mean, it, it is it is really competitive out there right now. And I think, you know, maybe maybe it's a, a good opportunity to share you know, share some stories and maybe help somebody else get a position that they're looking for, you know, in the, in the near future, uh, 945-9292, 1-800-518-9292, outside of Delaware, and pound 927, that's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Ver uh, Verizon Wireless dealer. So, um, I'll go back to the, uh, go back to the Apple Store story. I, I actually, uh, actually, let's, uh, Let's take a call. Let's take a call. Uh, and uh, you're on the air. Hey, it's just going to sound crappy, but the easiest way to get a job is to tell the interviewer, and this is hard to do because everything's done on the freaking line. Uh, if you get to a place with brick and mortar and actually meet somebody eye to eye, you tell them what you can do for the company. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a really good point because you're trying to basically you're trying to sell yourself to that employer, and if you can show them why you would be the best employee, and and it does it, it you're absolutely right it does help to do it in person. You really can't. Yeah. You really you can't. want them to be convinced that you are the best person for the job, right? And finding the in, in brick and mortar is hard to do nowadays. Um, who? It's really hard because everybody's doing it on the internet. Yeah, and it's and it's uh, until you sit down in front of somebody, you don't know if they're worthy or not. Yeah, and and it's really hard to stand out from everyone else if you're just another resume on the pile or you're just another email. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, somebody will see your resume and it looks like everyone else's, but you might be the best person and you have no way to show that to them. It's it really is a. It, it you make a good point. It's really always better to see somebody in person. Well, it also helps. Um, I've never tried this because I've had the same job for almost twelve years, but I've recommended it to other people. On your resume, if you're doing it on a computer, um, add cartoon characters. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, like um, when it comes to. Um, like your, what you do outside of work, like if it says something, are you a member of local groups? If you're a member of Millsboro Fire Department, put a little fireman next to your outstanding groups. If you're a church member, put a little cross next to it, that kind of stuff. So it's something, hey. anything to attract attention to your resume. No Certainly. Words. Oh, yeah. well, that's that's a really good idea. I never really thought about that. Well, I think outside the box. Yeah. That, um, hey, that's uh, that's always a good thing. Somebody's attention. Sure. I mean, that is the best way to get a job. And and you got to differentiate uh, differentiate yourself from everyone else that's you know competing. Especially nowadays, it's so competitive for any kind of job anymore. Well, um, I once interviewed for a job, and on the application it said, "Do you go by any other names?" So I wrote, like, butt munch, um, <laughs> a couple of sanities, and the guy in the office was laughing his butt off when he was reading it. Uh, and, and Sometimes it, you got to do it with a sense of humor also. Oh, well, yeah. It's yeah. amazing what can happen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Who wants a stale person working for him? Ex I'd rather have somebody funny myself. Exactly. So. Exactly. Well, well thank, thank, you for the, uh, thank you for the tips. Those are really good tips. And I uh, want to thank you for the call. And we're going to take one more call before the uh, before the bottom of the hour break. Hello, you're on the air, 92.7 WGMD. Hello, you're on the air. Okay. Okay, uh, okay uh, with that, we're going to take a uh, break, check the marine weather, and we'll check back in with Dan over at Nicola Pizza for the 40th anniversary. If, uh, if you're calling in, just hang on. We'll take some more calls on this right after this break. Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Delmarva. Okay, let's go back to the phones. Hello, caller. Are you on, still on there? 
Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Okay, well, uh, try calling back. That's who I think it is. Okay, let's uh, let's take a call from our friend David from Georgetown. Hi, how you doing this afternoon? Good afternoon, David. How are you doing? Okay, not bad, not bad at all. I have an interview story that would uh, probably top any anything that anyone can say. Oh well, go ahead. Okay, when I when I got out of the service after completing three years in June 1969, I was living with my wife's uh, parents. Uh, my wife and I were living with her parents in uh, New Jersey, and I went to a uh, search agency in uh, New York City, and I had uh, interviews with several companies. One of them was with uh, Hallmark Cards, and after going three through three interviews, they said that we would like to hire you, but before we, we do that, we would like to interview your wife also. We That's would it. like to interview your wife also. In other words, I guess the issue was, at that time, paperwork at night and phone calls and things like that to uh, um, uh, dealers and so forth. And uh, she responded to me. She said, I will absolutely not do that. Oh, so uh, I guess they wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to disrupt your family life? or Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. And um, uh, I reported back to them the next day that she said, absolutely not, and I agreed with that. I was hired anyway, and um, after going through, through three interviews, they, they did hire me. They called me, I think it was on a Friday, and asked, if, and, and asked me to start my training the following Monday. And to which I responded, I said, well, I can't do that because I'm leaving the, the United States for a European trip tomorrow. My wife and I were going on a, uh, a seven-week tour of, uh, not tour, but a hitchhiking trip through Europe. Oh, yeah, sure. For okay. seven weeks. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and, um, actually, and then I... they said, okay, well, can you call us back after, after you arrive back here after Labor Day? I said, yes, and that was fine. <laughs> hey. So, I mean, they wanted to interview my wife for my job. That's a, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing. I don't think any company could probably get away with that these days, though. No. Yeah. Uh, probably. Well, um, probably not. But that was in 1969. And, um, um, I mean, it was interesting. And I was hired. I remained with the company for four years and then left to join another company. But um, 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 it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that they would like, the wife or the spouse of a potential employee to be interviewed. Yeah, that that is a uh, that is. I a, don't think that would be appropriate today. No, pro <laughs> pro probably not. I, I think the, these days uh, that and there's probably so many people looking for any job that they could probably find it. You know, somebody that's single anymore. Uh, I I guess at at this point, at this point, you're probably not even allowed to ask if somebody's married anymore. I don't know. Well, I guess I think they can ask for marital status on the um, employment application, yes. But that probably should not be considered in whether an employee is going to be hired or not. But, they, but the uh, potential employer does still have that information at hand. Oh, yeah. But, well, um, yeah. I, you know, I found that amazing, and uh, to this day I still recall that. And uh, she said, absolutely not. I will not interview. And I think that this was the first case they've ever had about that. <laughs> yeah. And that, that was in 1969. Yeah, that's uh, times certainly have changed, <laughs> yeah. haven't they? All right, Don. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, yes. Go yes. Ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I hit the wrong button there. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Okay, take care now. See you later. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely an interesting. Uh, that's that's an interesting uh, an interesting twist on things. I think it's definitely something completely different, where they they're actually calling in a family member to make sure that it's one of the situations where you're not where the job isn't going to interfere with your family life. So uh, yeah, well, uh, if you have uh, any more comments, nine four five nine two nine two one eight hundred five one eight nine two nine two outside of Delaware, pound nine two seven. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless, and you're.
authorized Verizon wireless dealer at Lenox Cellular. Hello, caller. You're on the air. 92.7 WGMD. Yes, that, that happened to me uh, years ago now uh, when uh, my husband was applying for a job. I don't think that's unusual. I think it depends upon the job. Well, turn off the radio. Yeah, it's... Uh... Oh, you, you, um, it's, it depends upon the job you're, you're uh, seeking. I have a question. Um, have you heard anything about a rolling a brownout in Sussex County? Uh, I haven't heard anything. Let me uh, just double-check. Our no, electric cooperative, oh, broad killers out of power, has been for, I guess, a better part of an hour. Uh, okay. Um, it, I, will you announce uh, if you hear of anything? I would, I'm surprised they haven't called you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If uh, if we get anything from, uh, I mean, anytime we get something from uh, Chop Tank or uh, Dell or Electric Co-op, we uh, we always announce it. I know you're good about that. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, yeah, you're, no problem at all, no problem at all. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess that was maybe uh, maybe the the, the uh, interviewing spouses was a common thing back in the '60s. It's that's interesting. I mean, before my time a little bit, so I uh, I guess I've never experienced something like that. But uh, it's definitely an interesting twist. Uh, and uh, with that, we're going to uh, take another break. Uh, we're going to check in with Dan Gaffney over at well, uh, over at Nicola one more time this hour, and uh, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. So yeah, going back to the uh, going back to the interview uh, interview topic for just a moment before uh, before the top of the hour. Uh, before that, I want to tell you about Hawkers G and E. Hawkers G and E on Cedar Neck Road, Ocean View, and Hawkers Supercenter, Route Twenty Six, Clarksville. Sign up for the new Gold Card. There's no limit to the amount of gas savings you, you can earn with your new Gold Card at Hawkers G and E and Hawkers Supercenter. See store for details. So, uh, yeah, anybody uh, has any more interview stories? Uh, we still have a few minutes before the top of the hour. 945-9292-1800-518-9292 outside of Delaware. Pound 927 on Verizon Wireless. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon and Atlantic Cellular. So just going back to the, the, the Apple Store story for just a moment. The uh, I mean, the whole, the whole situation, at least in my uh in my case was just it was just a strange situation and of course you know like i said i didn't get the job um they hire i mean they hire a certain type of people there um usually younger and you know probably a little bit more hip than i am so you know and there was no 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 big loss i mean it you know, wasn't what i wanted to do for you know, living for the rest of my life so i really wasn't that completely upset about it but i did some more research after after the fact and it turns out that they actually have a have a practice of doing these 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 strange interviews and hold on a second let me see if i can uh come up with some of the strange things that they do yeah, the uh yeah this is actually a story from a uh, guy that went through the whole hiring process actually and uh looks like he never worked there but you know they they had a lot of uh, strange questions on the exam. They actually they actually gave these guys an exam, which is kind of strange. Um, we didn't have any kind of any kind of stuff like that going on at the interview that I went to. Just I mean, a, few, a few small questions and strange questions. Strange questions, you know, like like I said, draw three things that, that describe your personality. And I, I mean, I had no idea where to go with that. I don't even remember what I drew in, at this point. But uh, and it looks like this guy got got strung along for you know for weeks or months. It looks like, and they and of course they didn't hire him, so he exposed the whole thing. I mean, you can you can do a Google search for it. Just put in Apple Store interview. There's a lot of just strange stories, but you know, acting acting out acting out little skits. Which I still I still don't understand the appeal of that. I mean, you know, if, if it was if it was a uh, job where someone is actually entertaining, I could understand it. I mean, it's like a, if you were to go to uh, for a job at a radio station, I would expect some kind of audition. But you know, selling iPods, it's a little bit. Uh, I don't know. It might be a little bit much. But then again, they have hundreds and hundreds of people looking for every position that they have at the store 
So I guess they're doing something right. Uh, so this is your last chance. If you want to call in with any more interview stories, 945-9292 in Delaware, 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware, and pound 927 on Verizon Wireless. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon wireless dealer. Uh, next hour, uh, got a couple more stories I want to get to. Uh, a, uh, a guy in Illinois finds $17,000 in the street, turns it in. Would you do the same thing? Uh, the story where a man sends accidentally sends a uh, text about a drug deal to a police officer. So, of course, that brings up the obvious question, have you ever sent a text that you regretted later? Or an email. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in the next hour. Uh, do you rough house with your kids? And why you should? Uh, is debt a good thing for young people? Actually, you might start off with that one next hour. That's uh, something that's kind of kind of bugged me since I saw the story a couple days ago, that debt could be a good thing for young people. But uh, that's all after the uh, top of the hour. Fox News coming up. And we'll go back out to uh, Dan Gaffney in a little bit at uh, Nicola Pizza. They're celebrating their 40th anniversary. We'll be right back after this. Ninety-two-seven WGMD. Thank you, Dan. Out at the fortieth anniversary Nicola Pizza in Rehoboth. Okay, we're going to uh, we're going to move on from the uh, interview topic. I uh, have a have a, little, a short one here that we will talk about for a few minutes. It kind of kind of struck me as interesting, considering where we live. Uh, small U.S. farms find profit in tourism. It's uh, from the New York uh, New York Times. Uh, for all the talk about sustainable agriculture, most small farms are not self-sustaining in a very basic sense. They can't make ends meet financially without relying on income from jobs on the, uh, off the farm. Increasingly, farmers are eking out more money out of the land in ways beyond the traditional route of planting crops and raising livestock. Some have opened bed and breakfast, known as farm stays, that draw guests eager to get a taste of rural living. Others operate corn mazes, now jazzed up with modern Phillips-like maps on cell phones that often turn into seasonal amusements with rope courses and zip lines. And ranchers open their land to hunters or bring in guests to ride horses dude ranch style. Uh, known as agritourism, such activities are becoming an important economic boost for many farmers. Early each morning, Jim McGuire milks the sheep and goats, and feeds the pigs on a small daily farm before heading off to his day job as a public defender uh, in San Luis Obisco, uh, Obispo County, California. His uh, wife, Christine, makes cheese and tends the animals. But in recent years, the McGuire's have added new chores, changing linens and serving food to the guests who stay at their two bed and breakfast units, one in a private wing of the farmhouse and the other in a remodeled corner of a barn. Money from the paying guests is now enough to pay for the animal's feed, one of the farm's biggest expenditures. This, I mean, it, this story brings up a brings up something interesting that I, I, don't, I mean, it's something completely different than this. But since we have a lot of farms in the area, maybe I mean, are are people actually coming to our area for this kind of tourism now? Is it something that, you know, maybe I mean, it, maybe it's something that somebody can consider. I mean, since we're so close to, I mean, we're so close to so many great beaches, and people normally come here for the beaches, but maybe, maybe it's, an, maybe people are going to start coming here for bed and breakfast at the farms. But uh, the other thing that the other thing that it, it, this actually made me think of was since we do live in a resort area, where do you vacation? I mean, you know, I've I've only lived here for about a year, and I lived in Wilmington for a few years before that. But uh, I've, I've, you know, I haven't been here really that long. Where do people that live around here go to, go on vacation? You know, where are you going on vacation this year? Say you live in Rehoboth or Dewey. I, I imagine you don't go to another beach. 
Oh, maybe you do. I mean, maybe you go to Hawaii or something like that. But, you know, where's uh, where are you going this weekend? Nine or this summer, actually. 945-9292, 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware. Pound 927. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. Yeah, um, you know, we're, uh, where where is everybody going for a vacation? I know... I know when I was growing up, since my dad was a truck driver, we didn't really take a lot of vacations because he, he didn't want to. I, I understand it now because I spent 10 years as a truck driver myself. I understand it now why somebody that drives 100,000 miles a year doesn't want to drive more. You know, and, and even when I was younger, you know, I, of course I wanted to go to Disney and all those places. And I still haven't ever been to Disney. I've been to Orlando a million times, but I've never been to Disney. And, uh, you know, I've driven past it a million times, but never been in. And if, when I was growing up, I thought that was kind of strange. We didn't go on vacations like everybody else did. Uh, every once in a while, maybe once every three or four years, we'd go, you know, visit family in uh, other states. But uh, we didn't go on vacation. And when I was younger, I didn't understand it. I kind of understand that now because my dad didn't want to drive I and mean, drive a hundred thousand miles a year i mean you don't want to drive to florida on your on your uh time off uh, let's go to the phones caller you're on the air i'm denise and i'm from milton hi how are you doing denise i'm doing fine and i just want to tell you i don't mind to um say but every year my husband and i like to go to point pleasant jersey <laughs> new jersey and i love the jersey beaches and I was grown up in South Jersey, and I go there every year. Awesome. I go for our anniversary. So it, it's sort of like a thing where you, uh, since you went there when you were younger, that's that's kind of a, kind of a sentimental thing for you then? Sentimental thing, and I was grown up in Lava Wet, right, by, right in between Point Pleasant and Seaside. And I just like to reminisce and go there, and I love the beaches there. I like to stand there. And I don't get bit up with bugs. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is one thing I've noticed. That that is. And I didn't notice when I moved down here. I'm allergic to those uh, sand flies, whatever you call them, oh. and all these little other bugs I never even heard of when I came down here. You, you so know, I don't go to the beaches in the summer here. Yeah, yeah. It's it, I I didn't even really know about the uh, about the bugs until uh, about the past week or so. I've decided I was going to go to the beach and get a little bit of sun. You know, and I've been living down here for a year. Man, that first day I went to Lewis Beach, oh, I got eaten up by those little yeah. flies. And you don't get that in Jersey. Oh. You don't get that in Jersey. See, in Seaside, you don't get it. In Point Pleasant, you know, it's nice to just relax and not get bitten up. Now, that, <laughs> th that actually might be worth a ride on the ferry to not get eaten up by the bugs. I know. So I look forward to it every year. Oh, well, hey, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you for the call. Okay, very good. Take yep. care. Yep. Yeah, that's wow. I I hadn't even really considered the Jersey beaches, uh, but I, I guess they are. I guess they are different. I mean, I I know uh, I know the bugs. May, I don't. Know, maybe there's somewhere somewhere around here that I can escape from the bugs. Uh, I mean, I've I've been going to uh, going to Lewis and Rehoboth since I I live in Rehoboth, so it's you know, and I kind of live about halfway in between the two. Um, Lewis seems to be a little bit less crowded. At least at the times of day when I go, so it's one of those things where if I don't want to, you know, if I don't want to be around a lot of people and I want a little bit of quiet, I uh, I just go to Lewis and. But yeah, the the bugs were killing me. They they definitely were killing me. And uh, with that, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna check the marine weather. We'll uh, check back in with Dan Gaffney out at. Nicola Pizza in just a little bit, and uh, we'll check Fox News as well and take more of your calls. Where are you going on vacation? Ninety-two-seven WGMD, the talk of Delmarva. This is Don Carpenter. Uh, we've been talking about where you're going for the summer. Uh, had a story from the New York Times. Turns out that farms are actually turning to tourism to make a little bit of extra money to make their ends meet. I thought it would be a, an interesting segue into bringing up, you know, where people that live in a resort area 
that also has a lot of farms. I mean, where where are you going for your summer vacation? And I think I mean I I haven't been on a vacation in in years. I, I think the last uh, the last one I went on was maybe six or seven years ago. I went on a uh, went on a cruise, and it was uh, you know Western Caribbean. It was nice. It was uh, yeah, but it's one of those things. But by the end of the week, I just wanted to get back to work, and you know that's just that's just the way I am. I'm not you know I I don't like being in one place for too long or at least not doing nothing for too long i mean i uh you know if i if i go um let's say to to vegas i've you know i think the last time i went to vegas was about nine or ten years ago i i after three days i got i got bored of the place i mean i really i just wanted to get home and get back to my normal routine so where do you since we live in an area where everybody comes to to get in um uh, to get away, where do you get away to? 945-9292 in Delaware, 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware, pound 927. That's a free call on Verizon Wireless, courtesy of Verizon, and your authorized Verizon dealer, Atlantic Cellular. Of course, we uh, in the last break, we had a call from Denise in Milton, I believe, and she said she goes to the Jersey beaches, which I might have to check into if they don't have the flies there. And call her, you're on the air. Yeah, I go to Maine to get away. Now that now that's getting away. I mean, I, I imagine it's probably a lot cooler up there this time of year. It is. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah it's uh, it is definitely a beautiful area. Um, I mean, do you go to the beaches up there, or do you go? I go to an island. Oh wow, nice, yeah. nice. So yep. so that's uh, and it's I assume it's probably a lot less crowded than this area during the oh, summer. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. That's another. That's another plus. Get away from the crowds. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for the thank call. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. That actually reminds me of one of the places I drove through on my you know many many miles of traveling. I got to see a lot of places that I would have liked to have gone on vacation. It wasn't. It wasn't Maine, but it was in New Hampshire. It was a place called Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and it was you know the um, the boardwalk was kind of like a throwback to the 1930s type boardwalk, like you would expect to have seen, you know, maybe in Rehoboth or Wildwood or Atlantic City back in the 1930s. It was a family-oriented place, and I I went through there in the wintertime, so the place was, you know, everything was shuttered up. There was nobody in town, but you could tell that it was just, it was really scenic, too. The The beaches look a lot different there, you know, more more rocky beaches, and it's definitely a, definitely a different kind of different kind of atmosphere than you get here, I guess you would say. Just like this would be a different atmosphere than if you went to Florida. The beaches in Florida are completely different from the beaches here. Apparently, the beaches in Jersey have been completely different from the beaches here. And uh, with that, we're going to take another break. Check the uh, weather, and we're going to uh, go back out to Dan Gaffney at Nicola Pizza in just a moment. Ninety-two-seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva, and we'll go back out to Dan in just a few minutes out at Nicola Pizza for their fortieth anniversary celebration. All that talk about pizza is making me hungry now. I guess I know where I'm going after I get out of here. Uh, so we uh, we were talking about the idea that farms nowadays are actually turning to tourism to make ends meet, especially the smaller farms. I mean, everybody knows it's really tough to make it in the farming business if you have a small farm these days. Um, and you know, we took a few calls on where people uh, that live in the area are taking their vacation since we live in an area where people come to to go on vacation. You know, I thought it would be interesting to find out where people that have lived here their whole lives go on their vacations. You know, and I mentioned that, you know, when I was younger, I didn't go on a lot of vacations. I still don't go on a lot of vacations. It's, uh, it's just not, I mean, I like to see new places, but I've seen pretty much everywhere in the United States. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are a few places I can go to for a few days to get away. But, uh, you know, I mean, living around here, I, I mean, it kind of, I, I can go to a beach anytime I want. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of strange. I don't get in the water myself anyway. I, anytime I can't see the bottom of the ocean, I don't get in the water. So that pretty much rules out anywhere north of maybe Florida. 
but uh that's just that's just a, a little quirk but would you would you go to a place that you would actually have to do farm work i just i i don't get the appeal of that but you know maybe somebody that works in an office they want to get out and do some work uh, you know, I mean, maybe it's good for the soul. Uh, 945-9292-1800-518-9292, pound 927. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. Last chance to get in on this topic before we go back out to Dan. Yeah, it's... Uh, We'll go back to the uh, go back to the story for kind of for a uh, conclusion. Although many farmers said they enjoyed the city country interaction at the heart of agritourism, it takes a particular type uh, type of person to pull it off. If you're not a people person, forget it," said Vince uh, Gizditch, who runs Gizditch Ranch in Watsonville, which includes a pick yourself operation with berries and apples. The ranch also has a farm stand and a pie shop. As Mr. Gizditch uh, talked with a reporter on a recent afternoon, he was interrupted repeatedly by people popping into the shop where customers calling to ask when his boysenberries would be ripe. Uh, Bonnie Swank of Hollister, California, runs a corn maze and a haunted house each fall on land that grows vegetables the rest of the year. At a recent agritourism workshop for farmers sponsored by the University Ext uh, Extension Service, she explained... Uh, explain the extensive planning that goes into the annual six-week extravaganza, which can draw up to 30,000 people and brings about a quarter of the farm's annual revenue. Uh, people look at what we're doing, they say, we could do that and make a lot of money, but it's just not that easy. And uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, if maybe there's somebody out there that's listening that runs a farm and they want to try something a little bit different, there's an idea for you. It's definitely... Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's it's an interesting option. It's an interesting option to look into with, uh, you know, considering we're so close to, you know, the beaches. We have a lot of farms. Maybe it's something to check into. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, take a couple uh, take a couple seconds for a break. We'll check the weather, and then we'll go back out to Dan one more time at Nicola Pizza. <laughs> Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. Okay, got a couple more stories I want to do in the next hour. We'll go get back to our normal format. Uh, still have the story that young people being in debt is a good thing. That uh, well, I'll have a few things to say about that. I I just don't understand how any. Well, I, I guess. Maybe in in certain situations, being in debt is a good thing. I just maybe I just listen to too much Dave Ramsey. I don't know. Uh, got that. Got the uh, decline in 3D movies. Maybe we'll get to that in the next hour. Uh, still have the the guy that paid for his uh, medical bill in pennies. Uh, might do that one in the next hour too. And of course, America was rated the number one. Most hilarious country. I'm not sure I agree with that one either. But uh, we'll do all that and more in the next hour, last hour of the show. Stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. Ninety-two-seven WGMD. Summer Capital. Broadcasting from Cape May to Denton and from Milford to Ocean City or worldwide online. You're listening to Open Source Radio with Don Carpenter on 92.7 WGMD. 92.7 WGMD, the talk of Delmarva. Welcome back to the show for the final hour. We'll be with you until 7 o'clock. Then Free Talk Live will be along to take you through the uh, rest of the night. Okay, uh, as, I, uh, as I alluded to in the last, at, at the end of the last hour, I'm uh, 
going to uh, go into a story. This is from this is from Science Daily. I guess it's a uh, you know a uh, a research publication. Turns out that young adults get self-esteem boosts from being in debt. Instead of feeling stressed by the money they owe, many young adults actually feel empowered by their credit card and education debts. According to a new nationwide study, researchers found that the more credit card and college loan debt held by young people between the ages of 18 and 27, the higher their self-esteem and the more they felt like they were in control of their lives. The effect was strongest among those in the lowest economic class. Only, uh, only the oldest of those studies, those uh, aged uh, 28 to 34, began showing signs of stress about the money they owed. Debt can be a good thing for young people. It can help them achieve goals that they otherwise uh, couldn't achieve, like a college education, said Rachel Dwyer, lead author of the study and assistant professor of the sociology at Ohio State University. But the results offer some worrying signs about how many young people view debt. Debt can be a positive resource for young adults, but it comes with some significant dangers. Young people seem to view debt mostly in positive terms rather than as a uh, potential burden. For this study, the researchers examined data on two types of uh, debt, loans taken to pay for college and total credit card debt. They also looked at both forms of debt how, and uh, how they were related to people's self-esteem and sense of mastery, their belief that they were in control of their lives, and that they had the ability to achieve their goals. Researchers have had two competing views on how debt might affect people's self-concept. Uh, some have said that debt should have positive effects because it helps people invest in their future. Others have said that credit should have negative effects because it allows people to spend more money than they make, thereby risking their future. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this this story brings up so many questions. I mean, first, I mean, do you do you agree that this this idea that somehow kids being in debt is a good thing? And so, I, I mean, I know. I mean, everybody does it when they're when they're younger. As soon as they get a credit card, they run that credit card up, and then they don't pay it, and then and they end up in they end up uh, with a bad credit score. And uh, like I said before, maybe it's just yeah, maybe I listen to too much uh, too many radio guys talking about how debt is a bad thing. But I don't. Know, I mean, as, and it, as I've gotten older, it's definitely sunk in. I mean, I you know I don't I don't uh, I don't borrow money for stuff these days but uh I mean, I mean do you think having debt teaches young people responsibility i mean I, I guess that's one of the things they're trying to claim here is that you know having this debt you know gets you into the world of you know you, you have to build up i mean you start with a little, little credit card then you get a car and then you get a house and I, I mean i i mean do you think that this actually teaches young people something Nine four five nine two nine two one eight hundred five one eight nine two nine two pound nine two seven. That's a free call, courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. And uh, I mean, for for those of you, I mean, I'm, I know, you know, I'm, I'm sure most people out there have some kind of debt. I mean, would you go back and do things differently if you could? I and mean, would go? Would you go back to when you were younger and, you know, maybe not go on that uh, go on that vacation to Atlantic City or you know, buy that expensive car that you shouldn't have bought. Yeah, maybe, maybe even buy a little bit smaller house. And, uh, you know, I mean, and for those of you that are in debt now, I mean, this would be a good chance for you to call in and, you know, let us know how you deal with it. 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware, pound uh, 927 on Verizon Wireless, and, of course, 945-9292 in the local calling area. Uh, it just uh, for for me the the whole thing just seems like another one of these studies that these uh, universities do, and of course at the end the very last the very last paragraph, uh, the study was supported by a grant from the National Science Foundation, which you know <laughs> is being you know funded by our tax dollars that are being borrowed, of course. I mean, it's just like a whole culture of debt. I mean, you know, and, and you know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm an economic expert. I'm obviously, uh, you know, if you're taking financial advice from me, you're probably coming to the wrong place. But it definitely doesn't seem like a uh, 
a smart thing. I mean, I understand borrowing money for college because it's so expensive. You know, pretty much everyone has to do it at this point. But there are more creative ways to do things. I mean, we can just stretch things out, maybe, uh, you know, work an extra job instead of taking that, that extra college loan. It's just, uh, I don't know, it seems, it's, it's common sense to me, but apparently young people aren't getting it. Maybe maybe it's just a sign of me getting old, but uh, let's take a call. And you're on the air. Okay. Okay, yeah. This is interesting that this is um, a study done at Ohio State University. Because I have a son who is getting, well, he's getting a double major. He's 24, and one of the majors is in business at Ohio State. And I think that his major there is really helping him and his wife get ahead. Well, I, I'd imagine it would. He probably uh, comes out with a little bit more understanding of how all of this works than, you know, a philosophy major, say. <laughs> well, he... What I was going to say is in, um, well, okay, they drive a 1980s Chevy Citation <laughs> to begin with. He loves it because he gets a lot of attention. People think it's cool. And he, it has nickeled and dimed him a little bit here and there, but not to death, you know. But anyway, so first of all, he's, they've got an old car. He got, in, in August, they'll have been married two years. She turned... 22 um, to the end of February, and two weeks before she turned 22, they bought a duplex for 69000 Oh, no, that's that's not a bad price. I, I, I guess they're in, in Columbus then? Yeah. Oh, that, that's... It's not far from from the uh, campus. It's, it's not in a... It's not in a great neighborhood, but it's in a neighborhood where they want to clean it up, and they actually got a little bit of a grant to, to help clean it up. That that See, now that's the kind of creative thinking we need younger people to do, instead of just borrow, 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 borrow. It, it's, uh, well, I mean, the thing of it is, they, the first two years that they were married, well, not quite two years, you know, two years and um, say seven, eight months, they... Um, lived in a, an apartment. It was a one-bedroom apartment, very small, and it, they, I mean, it was very crammed, very tight, but they only paid 350 a month for the two of them. <laughs> and, and he he works at FedEx in the mornings. He goes in in the mornings at, at uh, 2.30 in the morning, and he, he can put in uh, 20 hours a week at FedEx. He's a package handler. He loads the, the trucks. Oh yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of those companies will actually help with tuition too. He, he they do both both him and Lydia get a little bit of uh, tuition pay. It's uh, I don't know if it's a thousand dollars a year or something like that. Both of them. But I mean, every little bit helps, though, right? I know. And then on top of that, um, yeah, by working at FedEx, they have their health insurance there. See now. Uh, I mean, you you did you did something right raising this one. I will tell you that. I mean, I'm I'm well. I do think I'm that this business major has helped him. Oh well, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, you know, and like I said, I'm, like I said, you you when you learn about how businesses work, and you know, I'm I'm sure he's probably taken a few finance courses too. I mean, yeah, it, it's uh, it gives you a little bit more of an understanding, I think, than yeah. than the average. So they, so they will graduate with a little bit of a, a debt. Well, it, actually, he has done very well in getting, and she has to, actually, the first year, um, her parents are, um, they live out of the country. They, they, they actually live in Turkey. But she, I mean, uh, she was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. They're, they're, they're Americans, but they, she was, but they are living in Turkey, and, and her parents are, teaching English as a second language in the university. He is, Mr., or her dad is uh, teaching English as a second language in the university, and her mother is teaching in the high school. But anyway, so Lydia has lived out of the country quite a bit. So she knows a lot how to scrape and how to be very frugal. See, no. It has really worked good for the, the two of them. Yeah, and and like you said, I mean, they might have a little bit of debt, but it's not something that's overwhelming, and it's something no. that they they've worked to try to avoid as much as possible. And I think that's a healthy attitude to have about it. Yeah, well, that's 
I just, I just, I look at them and I'm, I'm amazed at how well they've done. I said to Lydia, "Girl, you're 21 and you already have signed your name on owning a property. You are quite fortunate." Now, just because Jason is part time, the bank wouldn't give him a loan, which I think is cool, but. They had to. They had to have a co-signer, and my daughter, who is has got a good full-time job as an RN, and is single, she said, "I want to sign for you." So, so they are actually kind of co-owners of. But for fifty-nine thousand, yeah, like a duplex. You see, is it is that both sides, or is it one just one side, or? No, it's both sides. They have, they own the whole property. They they have a um they have the um. Both sides, they've got a renter that has signed the lease, and he's, they're, they're, they are good. They, Jason said they come with cash every month. The first of the month, they come with cash, and he said um, um, are very prompt in paying, and they have signed the lease until, I think, October, November. And so, and they've got the, the, the duplex they have, the Jason side, has uh, two bedrooms, Oh, no, three bedrooms. And uh, the master, he, got, he and his wife have the master bedroom. And then they've got her single sister and her single brother are living there, and they're paying a little bit to, uh, for their room and board. And the other week he called me up and said, somebody asked me if I would take a homeless person and put them in the basement. Well, actually, they wanted to put him up in the attic, and he said, it's not finished. And he said, I think we could fix up the basement a little bit better. And he said, what I'm going to do, this guy um, is really good in construction. And he said, <clears throat> he is going to ask, he's going to pay this fellow $20 an hour, and he's going to ask him for 10 hours a month. So he's getting $200 worth of work out of this guy to help fix up this new uh, this uh, duplex they've got. They're going to put all new windows in, and they're going to put uh, sheetrock in the attic. And uh, so, anyway, I look at him and I say, "Jason, I don't." I, you know, I'm just amazed at him. I, it, it, it just kind of seems to fall together for him. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what. I mean, it, kid's got it together. He's he's definitely got it together. I mean, he he knows he definitely knows but, what he's doing. But anyway, he's he is not out there. I, I feel like he's not out there with pride in. And um, the fact that he's in debt, but he knows how to make it work for him. Yeah, that, see, and that that's that's how that's the correct attitude to have about the whole thing. Instead yeah. of just you know, I spent a bunch of money in my credit card, and now I'm you know, I'm, I'm proud yeah. of myself. I mean, he, this he has used credit card. I mean, I, he hasn't. I mean, I won't say that he hasn't. And he, they have a credit card that that they use. But they pay it off every month. Too. See, yeah, I'm, and, and you know, and, and I know, I know some guys in the radio will say, "Oh, you're not supposed to have any." Uh, hey, if you if you pay it off every month and you're responsible, there's no reason why you can't do that. Yeah, and well, then I, and he's, by he's, having it, then they can. If you don't have a credit card, you can't rent a car. You can't do um, get a motel. Lots of times, uh, you know, ahead of time. And so there's a lot of things that way that that uh, you ha- you do need a credit card. Oh yeah, and I'm, I feel like they've done okay, and but they, they're they're willing to see, and they're not they don't have a huge debt over their head. I mean, yeah, in a way they do, but in another way they've got a lot of I think good things going for them. It'll pay for itself. Yeah, I I, I don't think he's going to have any problems at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wanna... anyway, I was just I was just. I was just very surprised that this study came out of Ohio State University. But um, he says that out there, the community where they're living in, the street where they're at, there's a couple abandoned places, and it was kind of a place where there was drugs and stuff, and they want to clean it up. And so they do have neighborhood meetings, and they get together, and they try to help each other, and they, they're going to clean up and keep the community, or try to really fix it up and get it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a good opportunity to get on the ground floor of a neighborhood that's being revitalized. I mean, yes. it, it'll it'll end up being a good investment, I think. Oh yeah, I think too it is. I hey, I'm my yeah. my hats anyway. my hats off to you. If I was wearing a hat anyway, I mean my my hats <laughs> off to you. I mean you you definitely. Well, raised... I decided since you weren't getting any calls, this oh. might be an interesting story to go oh. with that. Hey, yeah, credit. that's that's definitely uh, 
And hey, that's exactly what I was looking for. All right. Well, thank you for the call. And uh, you're welcome. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great story. And uh, with that, we're going to take a uh, short break and uh, check the uh, check the AccuWeather, and we'll be right back after this. Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. Okay, we're uh, we've been talking about a story. It was out of Ohio State University that young people between the ages of uh, it looks like uh, eighteen to twenty-seven think that uh, they uh, have higher self-esteem if they carry some debt, both credit card and uh, student loan debt. And you know, I, I, like I like I was saying the. The student loan thing I can kind of understand because it's something that's kind of a, a necessary and and even you know like the uh, like the uh, last caller I mean even a little bit of credit card debt isn't always a bad thing I'm not I'm not going to be the guy that's going to sit here and tell you that credit cards are evil and you need to cut them up but it's one of those things where it should just be a tool that you use to do whatever you need to do I mean if you need to re- do some repairs in your house or you need to ca- get your car fixed. Obviously, you're going to have to sometimes, I mean, if you if you get stuck with a $2,000 repair bill on your car and you don't have the cash on you, I mean, you have to do that. But uh, it's one of those things, I, I, I don't think it's something that should be encouraged as being good for, you know, for young people's financial health. I mean, it's just more of the, uh, I guess, more of the, the culture that, you know, there's just, you know, you don't have to think about tomorrow. It, I don't know. It just uh, always struck me as a little bit wrong. Of course, if you disagree with me, uh, or if you agree, 945-9292 in Delaware, 1-800-518-9292 outside of Delaware, pound 927. That's a free call on Verizon Wireless, courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. And uh, let's go back to the phones. Uh, Looks like we got David from Georgetown. Do you mind if I make a second comment on your show tonight, please? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, concerning uh, credit cards, um, the number one rule should be people should never, ever charge things that they can either eat, drink, or wear. Eat, drink, or wear. You know, I uh, I never thought about the wearing one, but the eating and drinking one is that uh, you wouldn't you'd be surprised how many people run up their credit cards going out to dinner every night and it just it always kind of confused me why somebody would do that yeah I mean, it's, it's well a, it's a temporary thing if 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 people want to go out to dinner get the cash for it or use the debit card yeah and then the second thing about credit cards is that if a person does owe the balance on a uh, owe a balance on a credit card and i think we've all been there Make sure that you read the statement carefully when it when it arrives in the mail, and if, for example, the minimum payment might be twenty five dollars or thirty five dollars, whatever it is, read somewhere on the statement where the finance charge is indicated. Oh and yeah, and then and then add that to whatever the person might want to pay, because yeah. the 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 minimum payment includes the finance charge for that particular month. And what you're doing, if you just pay the minimum payment, you're just going to get the same thing over and over and over again. And oh. then another thing, too, um, just just briefly, Don. Sure, sure. Um, if people have a credit card balance, and if they know their payment is due, for example, on the 30th of the month, why not send in one half of that payment on the first or second of that month, and then one half on the 15th or 16th of the month, thus satisfying the entire minimum payment due, but reducing the overall balance subject to interest. Yeah, that's, uh, I've actually heard of that, uh, that uh, method being used before. It's, uh, I mean, that's, a, it's a good way to do it. It's one of those... It's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple. And most 
most credit card companies will accept payments over the phone or on the internet. I don't do the internet, but I do the, um, you know, I make payments over the phone. And uh, you find yourself in a much better position because when the payment is due, it's already been made. <laughs> yeah, th- there you go. And uh, you avoid those late charges, which are always the worst thing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And, th- and nowadays they're just raising, I mean, if you get one late, one late payment, they just jack your rate up to you know twenty six, twenty seven percent, and it just it uh it's not good. It, it's uh it's something that definitely uh definitely should be avoided if at all possible. People need need to monitor their statements very very carefully. Oh yeah. Most people don't keep don't even keep receipts, and most people or uh, most I say most people maybe not, but every time a a, a charge is made. The person that makes the charge should keep that receipt, place it in the file with the uh, uh, credit card statement, and then at the end of the month, um, uh, match up the uh, the statement to the charges that were made. Most people don't don't do that, quite frankly, Don. Oh yeah, and, and it, they really and, should. And that's how that's how the banks can get away with uh, doing half the stuff they do is because people aren't vigilant. Well. I don't deal with banks like that, quite frankly. I deal with other uh, local institutions and a credit union, and I've never had a problem with that. But many, many of the big banks, Bank of America, Chase Manhattan, uh, PNC Bank, uh, Wells Fargo, all these other um, issuers, uh, they're not going to they're not going to put up with people that uh, simply don't pay their bills. Yeah. yeah. Or, 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 or you know, so. Keep it local. Keep it local. Hey, that's 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 the good advice. Good advice. Keep it local. <laughs> See you later, Don. Thanks a lot, David. And uh, yeah, with that, we're going to uh, check the uh, marine weather and Fox News, and we'll be right back after this. Ninety-two seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. Six thirty-seven. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure, quite a few people out there are actually uh, watching the uh, Belmont as we speak. I. Uh, that's one of the one of the horse racing. Something I used to really be up on, but uh, I just haven't really had a chance to keep up with it. Um, we're gonna move on from the uh, from the debt subject for a uh, for a little bit. If uh, if you do want to call in about it, still. You can 945 9292 one 800 9292 or pound 927 on Verizon Wireless, courtesy of Verizon and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon dealer. I um, want to move on to a uh, another story. I mean, it's uh, another story of uh, younger people, but a little bit younger than uh, college students. Uh, this is a this is actually from a uh, looks like a blog that uh, for mothers. But it's, uh, do you roughhouse with your kids and why you should? A uh, recent article looked at the benefits of roughhousing, and here's what it said. Uh, Play looks a lot different than it did 30 years ago, said Dr. Anthony Anthony D. Benedet, who co-wrote The Art of Roughhousing, Good Old Fashioned Horseplay, and Why Every Kid Needs It. I think it's time for us to cut the strings a little bit and let kids go and play with them. Roughhousing does more than keep kids physically active. There are clear signs showing that it helps kids' academic success. It's associated with being more flexible behaviorally and being able to deal better with unpredictability, the doctor says. Uh, Play, especially active physical play like roughhousing, makes kids smart, emotionally intelligent, lovable and likable, ethical, physically uh, physically fit and joyful. Uh, that's, uh, That's written in this book. Uh, so what is roughhousing exactly? You kind of know it when you see it, explains the doctor, who is the father of five, uh, two, and uh, six-month-old girls. And it says in parentheses, girls can roughhouse too. Uh, 
There are two main types, he says, improvisational freeform roughhousing, which can include everything from wrestling to jumping on the couch to pillow fights and uh, set moves that are almost like physical challenges with your kid. The article goes on to describe roughhousing workshops that parents can take with their kids. Uh, workshops? Okay. I guess, I mean, do we really need that kind of stuff? Uh, I mean, is, is that where we've gotten in society that we have to take a class on how to roughhouse with our kids? And the, uh, the blogger writes... My husband was the one that saw the story and sent, uh, sent her the link. He loves to roughhouse with our kids, and now the kids love to roughhouse with each other. Uh, her husband used to wrestle with the two big kids, and now the uh, younger one is totally in the game. So, uh, what, what do you think about this? I mean, you know, for those of you who still have young kids, do you, uh, I mean, do you roughhouse with your kids? I mean, is, uh, you know, do your kids, are, your, are kids allowed to roughhouse with the other kids? Or with each other anymore. I mean, what about with their friends? And is that even allowable? I mean, it's all we see anymore. And, you know, if you turn on the TV, all you see is talk about bullying and bullying and kids. Ki it's it's almost like uh, it's almost like kids aren't allowed to be kids anymore. And I I just don't get it. I mean, I, I guess maybe, you know, I guess I probably grew up in the last generation. that was kids were actually allowed to be kids. I mean, I remember when I was, you know, nine, ten years old. I mean, we'd we'd have outright fist fights every day. I mean, kids, you know, and and it was nothing, nothing serious. We didn't call the cops. We didn't arrest kids. You know, the little the neighborhood bully would show up, and a bunch of us would team up, and we'd go after him and run him out. And the next day, he'd come back again, and and the whole thing was all in good fun. And I, I think that we've kind of lost that with our kids these days. It's just something that we just don't, we don't allow kids to explore that part of their personalities anymore. And I think it's starting to show. I mean, all you see now is stories about kids being bullied and they sue the bully or they sue the boy's parents or they sue the school, you know, and then a million lawyers get involved. And maybe that's the, maybe the, that's the, the new equivalent of roughhousing is filing lawsuits and you're getting, you know, getting all kinds of groups involved and then you get, you know, big sports stars and the president and the first lady and uh, whoever else involved making all these public service announcements that kids shouldn't be bullies. And if you get bullied, you should go tell somebody. And maybe, maybe, maybe we just need to go back to the old, the old way of dealing with bullies. And that's, you know, you, you get... If you can't take the bully yourself, you get a couple of your little friends and you maybe fight a little dirty. I, I just, I don't, uh, I don't get, you know, where uh, society's gone anymore with the, uh, the, uh, uh, to use an old fashioned word, molly coddling of the kids. I don't know. What do you think? 945-9292 in Delaware, 1-800-518-9292. Outside of Delaware, pound 927. That's a free call courtesy of Verizon Wireless and Atlantic Cellular, your authorized Verizon Wireless dealer. Do you let your kids roughhouse with other kids anymore? Do you even let them roughhouse with with you or, you, you know, or your spouse? I mean, I just, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, my, you know, my daughter's a girl, so we didn't do a lot of roughhousing, but, the, you know, there was a little bit of it. And, you know, I think my, my kid's grown, you know, she's a teenager now and she's grown to, uh, you know, be fairly well adjusted and she's a good kid and you know it, it certainly wasn't a uh, it wasn't a, a a thing where you know you treat your kid like a precious little snowflake oh no pre kid get kids get hurt i mean that's that's just the way it is kids get hurt skin knees and every once in a while a broken arm and we're so afraid of that these days that i think we really are denying the kids their legitimate um legitimate right to actually have fun anymore and you know i don't know it's not a Maybe that's not one of the rights that's written down on the Constitution, but maybe kids just don't have the opportunity to have fun and just be a kid anymore. And uh, I think that's a shame. We'll be back. 92.7 WGMD. The Talk of Delmarva. 92.7 WGMD. Ninety-two-seven WGMD, the talk of Del Marva. Okay, we're gonna go back to uh, go back to the roughhousing again for just a just another minute or two. And uh, you know, if you uh, if you have any comments on 
you know, this. If you if you, uh, you know, if you if you think that your kids should be allowed to rough house, and you know, you think it's a good thing, one eight hundred five one eight nine two nine two outside of Delaware pound nine two seven. Okay, okay, I'm actually being I'm actually being handed a note here with the uh, with the uh, results of the Belmont. Wow. Uh, well, okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll get Fran to sit here, sit in for a second here. You can tell us a little bit about the race. Hi, Don. How are you? Oh, good, good, Fran. So, uh, so, yeah, it's completely not what you expected, is it? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, for the uh, first two races of the uh, the Triple Crown, at least I got one winner. Possibly, actually, I got two winners in the uh, Kentucky Derby. This one. <clears throat> Your winners, a number three, a ruler on ice. And second came a number two, stay thirsty. And third, number five, brilliant speed. Uh, the track was incredibly muddy for the mile and a half, and it was a pretty slow pace. The, the payout, uh, ruler on ice was a 24 to 1 favorite. Stay thirsty was 20 to 1, and brilliant speed was 10 to 1. So your payouts uh, for uh, first uh, was uh, $51 to win. $26 to place, $13 for show. Number two, Stay Thirsty, $19 for place and $10 for show. And Brilliant Speed play, paid $790. Your Exacta paid $928. <laughs> Just the, the, that's not even that's the try. The Exacta was $920. If you had the 3 2, oh, nine, for a $2 bet, $928. The trifecta paid $8,268. <laughs> Uh, the package, which was the three two five six, you ready for this? Seventy four thousand dollars. And you know the for a two dollar bet. And, and you know the only guy that hit that super effecto was probably was some, some guy. Some <laughs> and he plays numbers. Yeah, or it, or some gal going. I like purple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it was a it was a very good race. The uh, favorite Animal Kingdom, the jock basically almost fell off the horse. Coming out of the gate, uh, didn't wasn't able to get back into the stirrups until the quarter mile pole. Wow, yeah, crazy. I, I'm I'm glad I don't I'm glad I don't play horse racing. Anymore. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't bet this one, kids. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> very I'm, good. I haven't uh yeah I haven't a haven't won a race in probably 15 years. So well, this one was uh, the the rain, the track conditions threw everybody. Oh yeah. So that's that's the name of that tune. Plus, there was uh, there were 12 horses in the race. Not one of them had run a mile and a half. That's that's the other thing. So no, nobody runs that distance anymore. Yeah, so it's exactly. Yeah. All right, well, buddy. Thank you, Fran. Thank you. Uh, that's our sports content for today. It's the only the only sport that uh, that's going on this time of year that I really even follow, especially with no football going on. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Sorry for the uh, sorry for the little sidetrack there, but uh, I think we kind of played the uh, the rough housing out. Uh, got a few minutes left. I want to. I'm gonna play you something that uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot, I mean, I've, I've seen it probably. Well, I, let's take a call first. We'll take a call before I. Uh, I'll end the show with the uh, our comedy content for today. And caller, you're on the air. Ninety two seven WGMD. I don't know if this would qualify as roughhousing, but uh, I have two older daughters and then a son. I think he's in. Spending too much time with the daughters, so to speak, because the other day I went to him and I said, hey, why don't we go outside and blow something up? And he looked at me like, huh? But then the word fireworks came out and we were, we had fun with that. But. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, it's one of those things, I don't think kids are, you know, as interested in blowing things up as they, as at least I was when I was younger. And I, I think that's not... You know that's that maybe that's not entirely healthy. I think it's healthy for a young boy to be interested in blowing things up. Yeah, little things. We're not talking. Yeah. You know. Well, no, no. But I, <laughs> I mean, would have been arrested for things I did as a kid today. I think. Well, let, let's just say. Uh, I mean, I used to take my Star Wars and GI Joe action figures and I'd light them on fire and yeah, put them in slingshots. Yeah, yeah, a little, and you know, a little firecracker in there, boom. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, and uh, you get that out of your system when you're young, and then it, you know, it helps you develop into a. More rounded adult, I think. Yeah, I think once you burn the eyebrows off, then you kind of figure out you ought to back off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my brother did that one, and he he would never admit it to anybody. He still to this day, he still to this day will not admit that he burned his eyebrows off. But uh, I know he did. I know he did, and and I actually almost got in trouble for that too. My uh, 
the uh, principal at school thought that I did it. And, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we did a kid. We did, well, we didn't do that. He was in sixth grade, and he had a mustache, and we took him in the bathroom and shaved him. <laughs> we grew up back, though, like a <laughs> week later. <laughs> hey, that's the good thing about it. It always grows back, right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for the call. Thank you. That's uh, good stuff, good stuff. It's uh, That's exactly what I was looking for, too. That's exactly what I was looking for. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, we're gonna wind down the show. Uh, like I said, I, I've I've seen this video going around, and uh, it is kind of it's kind of uh, I mean it's not a it's not a it's not a sight gag, so you should be able to get it here. But uh, yeah, as it's I was almost left speechless by this. Let's uh, let's get it started up here. Hello, my name is Debbie. Um, this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on this. It's uh it's a video that this woman up uploaded to a uh, dating website. Uh, Dating website called eHarmony. That's you know they they uh, kind of specialize in more serious relationships and uh, you know more more. Uh, I don't want to say religious because I don't think they're overtly religious, but I think they you know they kind of cater that audience a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, a young girl, and you know she's maybe uh, I think she says she's twenty four or twenty five. But uh, I'll play. Uh, I'll just let the video play and let it speak for itself. Is my first attempt. Oops. Um, at a eHarmony video, um, this is my first time at online dating, so I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time, um, so I'm just gonna start talking about what I like and hope I get some replies. Um, so I am a recent, um, MBA grad from Villanova. Okay, I'm going to stop her right there. She doesn't sound like she has an MBA. Um, I love cats. Um, and here it starts. I just, sorry, I'm getting emotional. I love cats. Um, I love every kind of cat. Sorry, I just, I really love cats. She really loves and cats. I just want to hug all of them, but I can't because that's crazy. I can't hug every cat. Yes, that's crazy. But I just want to. I want to. I want to. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I get, anytime I hear cat, I just, I love cats. Um, she loves ooh, cats. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Um. So anyway, I am a cat lover, um, and I love to run. Well, at least she likes something besides cats. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about cats again. And back to the cats. <laughs> I just, I think about how many don't have a home, and how I should have them, and how cute they are, and how their ears and the whiskers and the nose. I just love them, and I want them, and I want them in a basket. In a basket. And I want little bow ties. <laughs> I want them to be on a rainbow and just in my bed. And I just want a house full of them. And I just want to still roll around. This could be I the best can't. thing I've ever seen. I, just, I can't. This could be the best thing I've ever seen. Oh, she really loves cats. Really, really loves cats. Uh, we'll see you next week. show where you the listener have full access open source radio with 